So DJ MB, as you know, from the Breakfast Club, right? This is DJ MB, right? That guy, he's unfortunately being sued by a bunch of people that he got involved with in terms of the business, in terms of like flipping houses and shit. You're going to find out most of it on the report. It's looking really bad for him. It's looking like he might spend some time in the good old prison system. And it's still blowing my mind, this whole thing, because I still can't work out why DJ Envy promoted his business partner, the Caesar guy, on his show, The Breakfast Club. He essentially brought a scammer to his place of work and use his workplace as a place to promote him in order to get more leads and shit it's fucking wild there's one thing to scam your fans outside of the job that you do your nine to five occupation but to bring a scammer on your actual platform on your radio show syndicated to fucking millions of people is legitimately insane I still can't work out why he did this. Uh, what I was saying about DJ? Oh, Envy is in big trouble. Let's go and watch the video report here. Courtesy of the news channel, and you can see what I'm talking about because this is kind of wild story. Let's play it so you can hear wild one. Team exclusive investigation involving a real estate deal and one of the most recognizable voices in radio. Investors in a real estate venture say they were swindled out of millions of dollars. And they argue syndicated radio rapper Rashawn Casey, better known as DJ Envy from the show The Breakfast Club, promoted these deals. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace talked to the alleged victims and has the response to those mounting accusations you're about to hear for the first Hold on. time. Did they call him a radio rapper? Did I get that right? I love when <laughs> they call him a radio rapper. One more time. And sure say they were swindled out of millions of dollars. And they argue syndicated radio rapper Rashawn I love it when they do that to black people. <laughs> YouTube rapper Agostino has been indicted on that rapper. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up and rap. Shut up and dribble. That's all we're good for, isn't it? Right? Laughing and joking, doing our little fucking dances and shit and rapping. All right. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Sean Casey, better known as DJ Envy from the show The Breakfast Club, promoted these deals. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace talked to the alleged victims and has the response to those mounting accusations you're about to hear for the first time. We've helped so many people, not just regular people, but celebrities, mm -hmm. athletes, executives. That's and DJ Envy on his syndicated iHeartRadio show, The Breakfast Club. He's you? often promoted the real estate venture Wait, of his pal, Cesar Pina. You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ. But it's more than just a passing endorsement. You could partner with us on some deals. Make some money with us. Envy and Caesar have teamed up for <laughs> seminars, including one at the Jacob Javits Convention mm -hmm. Center, pitching opportunities to flip properties often in distressed areas of new jersey by the way by the way guys you know what makes this scam really evil because i've been digging into it i've been going down a bit of a rabbit hole there's loads of people online who are doing really great um commentary on it there's a credit guy there's another guy i think called jt there's obviously tony the closer that's been blowing it up but you know what's really evil about this piece this scam they didn't buy any of the houses. It's not like it started off well and then they got greedy. From the beginning, they never owned the homes that they said that they were going to be flipping. Because the idea behind it was that they would have this house, they would have people buy a part of it, a portion of it, or the whole of it, then they would guarantee um, outcomes and you know money back and shit. And then obviously you'd get your return. But they never owned the properties. They didn't own them. None of them. They just took people's money and spent it on fucking DoorDash and buying fucking Chanel and shit. $200,000 and looks like we're never going to get it back. Jose Santiago and his wife Jessica Ortiz say they believed investing in this neighborhood of Patterson would be their ticket to the American dream. That's the reason why I got into real estate so we can actually start flipping properties, buying properties so we can have something for our kids in the future. The couple says they connected with entrepreneur Caesar after seeing him on social media with DJ Envy. And he's advertising this all over the radio and on television i've seen shows on him all over the place so i thought this was legit i'm not gonna lie right i'm so surprised by this because in my experience from what i know about different type of communities immigrant communities hispanics latino people latina people are quite similar to black people 
sometimes I feel like we're very skeptical people. We have the skeptical hippo eyes. We can spot scams out because, you know, we come from rough places. We've had horrible upbringings. Money is scarce. You're not really easy to kind of open your hand and give money to people just like that willy nilly. So I was kind of surprised to see people who are clearly in functioning, stable relationships with people who have each other's back and stuff, take the family savings and invest it in this specula speculative shit only because of somebody that they know online is famous as pushing it. I was actually surprised, I'm not going to lie, but it actually speaks to the power of celebrity because all of these people are saying, which is what is Envy's really kind of has to be worried about. Every single person so far I've seen is saying that they would have never done the business or the opportunity, whatever it may be, the investment thing, if it wasn't for DJ Envy promoting it on his radio station. They didn't know who that Caesar guy was before Envy pushed him on The Breakfast Club or before he endorsed him on his social media feed. That's the main issue that Envy has. But I'm actually surprised that these guys, would, you know, their partners would let alone, because I know how my mum is. My dad might have these ideas about what to do with the money and shit, but my mum is not going to... She's not going to play with that taking family savings to invest in this really crazy scheme that makes no sense. She's not going to do it. So I'm surprised people would do it, but I understand the power of influence, the celebrity culture that we live in at the moment. It's kind of toxic and shit. But um, yeah, man, I just, I just feel so sad for these people because when you actually do a bit of a deep dive into it, you find out that the likelihood of, their, of them getting their money back is very, very slim, almost to zero. That's the real truth about it television i've seen shows of him all over the place so i thought this was legit the pitch to invest in rundown properties that would be renovated and flipped for more money the promise to return up to 30 percent in some cases caesar didn't even own the properties this couple took out 200 big up illusionary commission appreciate you logan paul vibes exactly Yikes. yes exactly logan paul vibes and again to me i know i get some bad comments from people saying this before but I'm going to stand on it, double down, triple down on it. There's something extra f scammy, something extra deplorable, something extra horrible when you scam people within your own community. Yes, I know scams largely across the board are bad, boo-hoo-hoo, cry on your pillow. But when you scam people that look like you, that are from the same places that you're from, and you know how hard it is for them to get that money and you scan them willingly. It's like, it's like preachers in the black churches who tell people to buy this special fucking water, holy water nonsense, and they scam people and stuff, taking advantage of people's desperation and shit. That's awful as well. And I feel like this is another level of awful because remember, <clears throat> in some cases it was a perfect scam because if I'm not mistaken, this scam happened around COVID times. So I think COVID was a weird time for scammers because it was like a golden, it was like the golden age of scamming because a lot of us felt kind of helpless around COVID and the pandemic times because of lockdown, right? A lot of us that didn't have any money or any means to travel or do the things that we wanted to do were sort of like limited and bounded by what the governments and countries allowed us to do. We couldn't go and travel because people that had money were basically living life as if things were normal. They were able to travel to third world countries and have luxurious holidays in places. They were able to just kind of live in a bubble that we couldn't live in because we had to literally lock in place. So I felt like the pandemic and the COVID kind of made people who were trying to pursue the American dream more desperate to pursue it because they saw what the reality is when you don't have money. So then the scammers slipped in and like, hey, I've got a way for you to make some money. Flip houses, guaranteed outcomes which is crazy because nothing in life is guaranteed except for death. Nothing in life is guaranteed except for death. Yet these guys are guaranteeing you 30% returns. And me, having done some research online and read some, and read some articles and watched tons of YouTube videos, I found out in the industry of properties, specifically properties, the industry standard, the highest you can get in terms of a guaranteed outcome is maybe 10%. But some people advise it's going to be under five. But these guys are advising that if you give them 100 grand, they're going to give you back 130,000 in less than six months. Come on, bro. Come on. Crazy. 
$100,000 in equity from their Florida home, promised that 30% return within four months. Then they say nothing. I'm paying the interest right now every month, and I have nothing. Well, at this point, we just want our money back. Nigel Chamblin says he was conned by Caesar into investing $235,000 in that same Patterson property, along with two others, $300,000 each for homes in Hawthorne and in Maplewood. $835,000 in total on all three houses. There were other people investing in the exact same properties. It was a scam. It was a lie. You know what's funny about this scam that I've also read online, people are saying? People are saying that there's parts of New Jersey that where these properties were, where they're actually bad neighborhoods. You can't actually buy a property in that area and turn it into something and expect to get your, to make loads of money on it. It might be a good rental property, but you're never going to sell it for like, you know, way more than what it's actually worth because the area is so dilapidated. There's a lot of crime, blah, 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 blah. So that's the thing that also boggles my mind. It's like, weren't these people doing a bit of research into the areas where they were allegedly investing into to find out what was the average prices of the houses, what houses were selling for? I guess, again, celebrity and influence makes people do some crazy things because that guy with the suit looked like a businessman. The guy with his wife looked like regular, normal people. They all seem like they have sense uh, and they all somehow got tricked by just social media clout influence and stuff. It's really crazy, but goes to show just how easy it is to scam people online once you get a bit of fame and once you get a bit of clout, which actually might be the most dangerous thing in this level of this society we're in at the moment. That might be the, in, the, the most dangerous thing. As soon as somebody gets some clout, gets some fame, the temptation to scam must be so high because you know you can do it so easily. So the content creators out there that are not doing that sort of shit, you should give them a big clap because I guess the temptation to do a little bit of a NFT thing, crypto thing, um, whatever, some fake whatever this, fake whatever that, it must be so high because the money is so good, the returns. If you have no scruples, if you have no conscience, if you have no morality, no principles, that must be so tempting. But honestly, I could not sleep at night knowing that I took money from people like that. 230,000. He had two investors and I've read accounts of four investors on the same property that didn't know about each other. So he was taking two grand, two grand, 200,000, 200,000. Like, God damn it, bro. Anyway, one more moment. Let's go again. Other people investing in the exact same properties. It was a scam. It was a lie. <laughs> Augie Rios owns a custom auto wrap shop in Lodi, who says he worked on Envy's cars for years and believed his pitch. Sorry, sorry to do this again to keep pausing. But somebody else said it in the comment section before, right? I think it might have been Fashion Roadmap. I don't know who it was. But somebody must have said in the comments, in the chat. There is something about people's appearance that you should judge them on. Sometimes stereotypes exist for a reason. I'm sorry. But if somebody tells me they have an investment opportunity and they have a beard like that, I'm not doing it. When they have one of those Rick Ross sort of like Crayola sharp beard things, right? And they put fucking, um, you know, fucking hair dye in their fucking beard or they put that shoe shine shit in there to make it black. I'm not involved. I'm not, I'm not giving you my money. Nope. No, no, not having it. I know, stereotypes are bad. People can look at me and think I'm a YouTube rapper. They can think this, they can think that. I know, niggy nog, ha ha ha, whatever. Golly work time. But, let's be fair. If a guy comes up to you with an investment opportunity, standing in front of a fucking um, Porsche, what, what's it called? Um, Porsche Cayenne, or those Porsche trucks and shit, outside of a Lambo, with a beard like that, with a money phone saying, get like me, run. If somebody comes up to you with one of those haircut beards, it's basically the way you cut your hair, they cut their beard like that and it's all connecting and it looks a certain way and it looks like they put fucking, you know, black shoe polish in it. He did get back a return on an initial investment with Caesar, but maintains a second investment on this Patterson property went south. If it wasn't for DJ Envy, I would have never invested into Caesar. I lost a total. Yo, big up Austin Case, you appreciate it, brother. Big and low. <laughs> Big Austin Casey. $64,000. After receiving two bounce checks, Rio says he got a. 
honestly, do you know how cruel it is? Do you know how cruel it is to give somebody a check for money you owe them, knowing that it's going to bounce? <laughs> do you know how evil that shit is? To give somebody a check, knowing full well you don't have the money to clear it, and it's going to bounce. That person's going to be on their, you know, they're going to have the check in their fucking back pocket, in their wallet. They can't wait to, you know, go to the bank at, at lunch, drive over, park up, give it to the teller and shit, get that shit cashed in, and then have it clear in a couple of days and shit, have it available for their family or to do what they need to do. Do you know how evil that is to give somebody a check that's not good? That shit is fucking dark. A visit from Caesar carrying this box of jewelry. <laughs> he said, uh, take this jewelry until I can pay you back. How much did he say this was worth? 15, 20 grand. Then there's... Re Rewind it again. Rewind it one more time. Rewind it one more time. How much was that check again? Thousand dollars. After receiving two bounce checks, Rio says he... He's got two bounce checks here. For sixty-five thousand dollars, and one for one hundred thousand dollars. Now, don't get me wrong, but I think when you add both checks up, that equals one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Right? One six five comma zero zero. Okay. Then, in order to tied him over until he gets the money how much is the change worth that he gives him he got a visit from caesar carrying this box of jewelry he said uh take this jewelry until i can pay you back how much did he say this was worth 15 20 grand then the <laughs> he owes him 150 thousand plus and he gave him jewelry that he said is worth 15 grand again i'm not a jeweler i don't wear much jewelry the only thing I have is a couple of she earrings from Amazon and maybe some sterling silver chains and a Casio watch. I'm not a jewelry guy. Not a jewelry guy. Never met him. But I can say with great certainty well, I can pay you back. How much should that that jewelry is not even worth 15 grand. Looking at that, what do you see here? We've got land. We've got a, a chain that says land lord. Not trap law, we'll trap cut out in the cross out in the middle. We have a big kind of bracelet thing there on the left. Do you think this shit is worth 15,000? Again, not a jewelry guy, never been a jewelry guy, never in that community, don't really care about jewelry that way in all actuality. But I can say with my untrained eye and having watched number of YouTube videos and having been watching many, many rap music videos that those chains do not look like they're worth 15 grand. If anything, those chains are the ones you buy online when you're trying to do a fancy dress thing. You want to dress up like old school Gucci Mane. You want to dress up like old school fucking Lil Wayne back in the day. You go on these fucking sites and stuff and they sell you these crazy chains. Like a lot of like, you know, African guys like to wear these chains, especially like the, you know, the Usher U, the long one. You know these places where they sell you kind of like cubic zirconian chains that look like the rapper chains. They're usually fake. Now, in my personal opinion, I think that's what these look like. They don't look like 15 grand to me. So not only are you scamming people, you're also giving them checks that are bouncing and you're giving them chains that are fake. You're going to hell. Did he say this was worth? 15, 20 grand. Then there's record producer Anthony Martini, who invested in what he thought was a promising apartment project in Patterson. I lost a million dollars. And he you scammed the white went guy. in because of DJ Envy. He scammed a white guy wearing a gallery department snapback. He scams blacks. He scams Latinas, Latinos, Hispanics, and Caucasian people. Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd known Envy for, for years. Martini's attorney has filed a lawsuit. Uh, some sort of Ponzi-like scheme where he's taking money uh, from one investor to pay off other, other investors. You're looking at over $40 million invested with the Pinas and their companies. They're saying now at current count, I've been keeping an eye on this, I'm really balls deep in all this shit. At the current count, According to Tony DeCloser, he helped to break this story and has led the charge in being a voice for the victims. At the current count, they're saying it's over $80 million that's been scammed by Cesar Pena and allegedly DJ Envy. 
60 million. No, over 80 million, sorry. Over 80 million. We're fast approaching the $100 million mark. Wow. Breaking news here on Tony the Closers Live. The complaint floodgates opened up when alleged victims started appearing on the social media platform of influencer Tony the Closer, a self-proclaimed real estate scam watchdog. I decided to make it where everybody would know up, Tony. The, the, the disgusting behavior that they're practicing. Dozens of lawsuits have now been filed against Caesar and his wife. Several also name Envy, who has sued Tony the Closer for defamation after also going on with him live. And there's nobody in here that could ever say Envy, they gave Envy a dollar. Envy, whose real name is Rashawn Casey, declined to talk to the I-team, referring us to a powerful... Also, if anybody comes up to you wanting to invest and their name is Rashawn, run. What's Rashawn? That name doesn't exist. That's one of those Caribbean fusion names that they do where they take, uh, I don't know, um, one half of one name and link it with the other and put it together with a little on the top a Rashan. if somebody name is called Rashan and they want to offer you an investment opportunity manhattan real estate attorney he says the radio personality lost half a million dollars to the penis in an investment deal to sure. transform this sure. vacant school building in patterson into rental units he is a victim just like the other alleged victims are in connection with the scam. Why, if he's a victim, hasn't he filed a lawsuit against the Pena's? He has a legal right to file whenever he deems fit. He is now contending with cases that are being filed every day improperly against him. Why not come out on his radio show and warn other alleged victims if he feels that he was? This is a, it's an ongoing, uh, there are ongoing litigations. Uh, and, and there is no room for them on, you know, any sort of radio show. A lot of people <laughs> say they bought in because... This is a tough job, man. Big up the lawyers for DJ Envy. This is a fucking tough gig to try and slip your way out of. Maybe there's a scenario where DJ Envy doesn't get any prison time. He has to pay a fine. Maybe it goes on his record. blah de blah 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 He pleads out. He snitches on, um, you know, on what's his face? On Caesar. But I don't see a scenario where he doesn't have to admit some level of fault. He has to because all of these people are saying they would have never known who Caesar Pena was if he didn't appear on The Breakfast Club. And DJ Envy didn't only bring him on once as a favor. He brought him on multiple times, which also I've heard online is his own crime. Payola is not legal. You're not allowed to do payola. You're not allowed to have a radio show and accept money to appear on your radio show without declaring that's a uh, appearance that was booked there's a couple of guys on there who said that they booked they paid for which i think is really excessive i think it's over i, don't, I think there's some opportunities that maybe payola makes sense but i think the alleged figure is like fifty thousand dollars they're saying the alleged figure is between fifty thousand to a hundred dollars if you want to pay somebody to appear on a radio station and have the like the interview on on radio a portion of it on radio and obviously have the podcast video thing go live on youtube fifty thousand dollars so some of these fake gurus influencer type money people what they're doing is that they're buying these spots on these radio stations to give them legitimacy which is again really sick calculated way to scam because they're purposely going on legit platforms in the hope that you'll see them on a legit platform and think oh he was on the breakfast club oh she was on hot 97 oh she was on this podcast that podcast and then you'll think it's legit and you'll give the people money but i think fifty thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars is too much but think about this if people are willing to pay that money it must mean it's worth it so just think about the amount of money these fake gurus are making online. Just think how much they're making. They must be making money hand over fucking fist. Day in, day out. Sucker after sucker giving them money. It's fucking crazy, bro. Absolutely crazy. Because of Envy's reputation, does he not have some responsibility? 
Absolutely not. The only reason why Envy is sued is to sensationalize the case. The attorney is seeking dismissals of all the lawsuits. As for the Pinas, we caught up with Caesar's <laughs> wife, Jennifer, in Bergen County. Do you have anything to say to the alleged victims? I say, you know. Yo, how tone deaf is she? Big up, Illusionary Commission. Appreciate you. Why you think Africans buy or enjoy fake jewelry? Um, there's nothing in there's nothing intrinsically African about buying fake jewelry. I think everybody buys fake jewelry to a certain level. I only think there's a certain group of people who are into jewelry and buy it legit. It's only a very small amount. I don't think that majority of people out there are buying real diamond rings and chains. It's nice to wear with outfits and shit. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think every immigrant community is really into kind of jewelry. Maybe it's a poverty thing, but I think everybody wears it. This idea that only African people wear fake jewelry is kind of racist, to be honest. Um, there's many people out there that buy fake jewelry. I think if you are being financially prudent, it probably makes sense to buy jewelry that's close to real as possible, but then maybe invest money into like buying gold and silver. Maybe that's more financially viable instead of like like i would never take a rolex and bust it down actually you're depreciating the value of the rolex right there's only a certain group of people that are going to buy a bust down rolly you're better off just buying a rolex as is and then just collecting them and using them as kind of you know investments and shit that makes more sense um but i don't see the problem with buying fake jewelry just don't try to sell your fake jewelry as real like you know <laughs> you like there's no issue with buying fake jewelry buy what the fuck you want it's your money but scamming somebody and then telling them hey hold on to my fake jewelry and then i'll make it right later on as a sort of kind of you know whatever layaway thing but then your jewelry is fake that's fucking evil in my opinion but what do i know anyway circling back to this pause this lady is the wife of caesar one half of the scamming crew or scamming duo She's now talking on behalf of her husband wearing a Chanel jumper. <laughs> I love how tone deaf and lacking in scruples scammers are. She's scamming. They stole everyone's money. Everyone's crying. And here she is talking on the news with a fucking, let's say, how much does Chanel jumpers go for? I'm going to say that's probably a thousand plus probably right jumpers because they're always overpriced these kind of items from especially luxury brands but i'm gonna say this this chanel sweatshirt knitwear thing is probably a thousand plus great idea <laughs> let's go back one bit again oh this lady missiles of all the lawsuits as for the pinas we caught up with caesar's wife jennifer in bergen county do you have anything to say to the alleged victims i say you know just hold tight and we're gonna come through you know where's the money <laughs> Listen, that's a caesar answer for you i can't give you that answer yuck yo 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 yo, yo. Sorry, sorry 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 if you are the bet if you are the other half of a scammer Either you do the El Chapo White thing. Oh my God, I had no idea I was married to a drug lord. Who, El Chapo? Who, um, Gabrielle? I had no idea Gabrielle was, was selling drugs. Oh, mommy, que asco, right? I had no idea. You go to prison, you do your time, you come out, you dig up the cash in the garden, you keep it moving. But what you don't do, you don't throw your fucking husband under the bus. That's a Caesar question. I can't answer that. Bitch motherfucker you enjoyed that money too you went to fucking cancun with me you were in monaco with me you went to fucking egypt we we're on those fucking camels we were on those camels together we were together on those camels holding hands doing that fucking couples thing right with the with the fucking pyramids behind us and now you are throwing me under the bus on the news that's a caesar question i can't answer that motherfucker we scammed together either you pretend you don't know me or you just keep it quiet like El Chapa's wife. No, no, no soy inglés. No soy inglés. No soy inglés. Lo siento. You just keep it quiet. But you don't get on there and say, that's a, that's a Caesar. That's a Caesar. That's a Caesar question. I can't. That's a Caesar. Ah! What kind of wife is this? He probably bought that jumper for her too for her birthday or something. He probably bought her that jumper with the ill-gotten gains from other people and then she's coming on here throwing him under the bus. That's a Caesar question. I can't answer this. Come on, girl. Hold your guy down. Scammers, 
have to scam together and hold each other down. Okay? When you scam together, you die together. Let's go back again. Look at her, man. Pinas, we caught up with Caesar's wife, Jennifer, in Bergen County. Do you have anything to Jennifer. say to the alleged victims? Jennifer. Say, you know, just hold tight just and hold tight. we're going to come through. Now, come where's through. the money? This, that's a Caesar answer for you. I can't give you that answer. He wants to be here with you. He wants to do the sit down. Sit down. He wants to have this interview. He wants to clear the air. He wants to explain his side and he wants people to understand what's going on. Mi nombre es Jennifer. Eh... El de Niero, I don't know where it is. <laughs> mi mujer, is that mujer? Is it mujer? Is it husband? What? Mi, 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 mi mujer, whatever the fucking husband is, is, right? He has all the money. On, but look at that. Have you ever met a skinny scammer? Have you ever met a scammer that look like they know how to fucking put a mill down? Look at the Caesar. Look at him. Have you ever met a scammer that doesn't know how to eat? Have you ever met a scammer that has never had a good meal? That doesn't look well-fed, well-groomed? Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at this guy. That's where the scamming money went to. Three DoorDash orders in one day. Boom. Huh? Huh? He's the guy getting the home fries. Whole plate of home fries. Four omelets. Six bits of bacon. Four sausages. No pause, orange juice, coffee, toast, pancakes, syrup. Give it all. Big tip for the waitress. Wink at her because she's cute and she might be underage, allegedly. Hey. He's been advised to not talk. There may be some hope for investors. A judge has appointed a bankruptcy court trustee to oversee some of the Pena's properties. Any available assets could eventually be sold off to pay alleged victims. From Patterson, Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York. And that's obviously it. And do you, do you guys want to see um, fucking um, his, his reply? Well, what's his reply in a minute, but... You know what? Something I've learned, by the way, from doing this deep dive into things. Because, unfortunately, I was one of those people. I was one of those people that went to seminars, right? I went to a Tony Robbins seminar one time. The ones where you have to, like, jump up and shit, right? <laughs> so I went to one of those seminars. I think you like the XL building. If you're from London, you know what the XL building is, right? It's this place in, like, East London where they have all these conferences and shit, right? I went to, like, a Tony Robbins thing, right? I forgot what it was for. One of those fucking... One of those come into your power books. I forgot what it's called. And you go out there and you say things. You're like, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be wealthy. Right? You just scream up, right? I don't want to be poor no more. Or something, right? I went to one of these conferences and I was like shaking around, doing my things, right? But I'm really lucky. I'm really lucky. Even though I paid money to go to this seminar, to go to do this rah-rah talking stuff, to buy the book, I didn't go the step further and get down this rabbit hole of like, I have to go to, because you know the people that go to like chronic, chronic seminar attendees, they keep paying money to go to these seminars thinking that this one is definitely going to, the next one's going to change their life. I would always go to a seminar once, get the information that I needed, buy the book at the end, and then try and use that to further my real life. You know what I mean? I never was duped under the assumption or under the illusion that the seminars were going to save me. I would use them as tools to help me continue, right? To help me, give me the foundation I need to go, go on, right? Anyway, whatever. Dumb, dumb, dumb part of my life. We're not going to talk about it anymore, okay? We go from there. So, one thing that I've learned from this deep dive I've been doing into DJMB Scam is this, which you probably you guys know. I didn't understand, right? And I only realized just now that people say... If you're making money, if you're making the amount of money that DJ Envy and Caesar said they were making on properties, like let's say they were saying they were guaranteeing 30% um, increases in the money that you invested, you give them 100 grand, they were guaranteeing you 30% returns. So they'll give you back 130,000. People are saying online, if you actually have money and you're in these wealthy, rich circles, businessmen and shit, entrepreneurs, you would never advertise that on social media. You wouldn't try to get randoms involved in it. You'll just keep doing it yourself. Or you take a loan from a bank, 
and just keep flipping those things. If, if that return is obviously guaranteed, you just keep making it yourself or you get your friends involved. But you're not going to blast it out on social and make it into a course and shit. People are saying online that that is a categorically a big red flag for a scam because rich people don't go out there and try and get other people involved in their businesses. They just keep the money for themselves. And I was like, oh. So all these things about, oh, I'm trying to help the community come into my business. I want to help uplift people. It's all bullshit because the richer you get, the more you want to keep on, keep a hold of your money. You don't want other people to get rich as like you, as you are. I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. And it also explains, if you ever watch these videos, which I watch sometimes on, on TikTok, right? There's these videos of these guys that go, hey, um, big up illusionary commission. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm with you until the young and teen. <laughs> yeah 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 don't worry don't worry we're, we're not crystal ears out here do you know what i mean we're not crystal ears out here we only mess with 45 year olds and up you feel me um but anyway <laughs> um i think someone was saying uh yeah if you've ever gone on tiktok there's those videos on tiktok of those guys that go hey um what do you do for a living all right there's another guy on youtube or on tiktok or youtube yeah youtube and tiktok and shit who goes to people's houses and knocks and says hey you live in this amazing house how do you get the house I've realized on those shows, when the person is like legitimately rich, they are very coy about talking about their job, how they make their money, anything. They sometimes give the most vaguest recommendations, advice. They don't like to talk on camera at all. It takes a lot of convincing to actually get them on board to talk about the thing. And when you find out, it's usually something super quote unquote boring, but it makes them a lot of money hand over fist. So rich people don't actually like talking about how they make their money, let alone giving courses. Do you know what I mean? That's why I realized like, oh shit. So again, I'm very fortunate that although I was susceptible to buying a seminar, buying seminars and buying books, I'm very lucky that I didn't get down that path because I'm, I have a, I think that's why maybe I feel so hurt and personally touched by these stories because I know I have a bit in me that's susceptible to getting scammed. I know it. I know I could be that guy that's like, I'm going to give you £10,000 because you're going to make me a TV star, right? Like, I'm one of those fucking idiots. So I know that I'm just lucky that all I did was always read books and listen to their YouTube videos or whatever and get the tools I needed to apply to my own life and see if that worked. But I never went as far as going down the, oh, give you 10 grand to do this and flip that. Like, I'm so fucking fortunate. I'm so lucky because... I can't imagine the pain these guys are suffering because most of you guys, I don't know if you guys are financially literate and shit. I'm not. I've only recently, maybe in the last few years, started saving money and whatnot and looking to like buy a house and all this sort of shit and buy a car, all this sort of like actually getting my debt in check. Right? Only recently, in recent years, I've done it the last maybe two to three years. But I've realized how difficult it is to save money over the last few years, right? Saving money from my paycheck at work and shit. It's very hard to save money. Even to save a grand, to have £1,000 in your savings and to have it in your account and not touch it is so difficult for a regular person that works a regular job. So can you imagine the pain it must cause to get somebody to take that savings money and intentionally scam them for it? That's really dark. That's really evil shit. To get regular people who work regular jobs money, saving that's taking them ages. Maybe it's a little bit shorter because you're commanding it in a couple. But to take that money that takes a while to save and scam it is horrible. Big up, crush. Crying face. What will we do without <laughs> men? <laughs> Crying <laughs> face. <laughs> Big up, crash. What will we do without men? Big up, crash. Big up, my guy JBP, bro, the Prozac king. But yeah, um. I just feel bad for everyone involved. Anyway, let's play DJ Envy's explanation. DJ MV sat on the radio show. And also, I think at the start of this excuse, doesn't he say his name like that also? That's very disrespectful. He's talking about the allegations and he says, hey, this is DJ Envy. He does that thing as well, that inflection that he does with his, with his fucking name. Fucking crazy. But DJ Envy responded to your allegations. What do you think? Is DJ Envy telling the truth or is he lying? What do you think? Let's play this video because this is a funny video. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Show. <laughs> Imagine you're scamming people and you're still doing the DJ NV. Like, you're scamming people. DJ NV. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Assad. So you're telling me Andrew Tate won't make me a billionaire like he promised. <laughs> But he promised. <laughs> I heard him say it on stream. If I just send him fifty dollars, oh, that's hilarious. Uh, right, it's a rich dude who became wealthy selling bolts that he used to put together. Exactly, 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 Uche. Exactly, exactly. But he doesn't want you to know that it's so easy to make that much money on selling the bolts at fucking cage hamsters and shit. No, 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 no. Um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Case of Moses. I think I got the book here actually. I think I might actually here. I think I actually have Think Big. I think I've got it. If you didn't buy one of these in the if you did if you didn't grow up thinking you're gonna be an entrepreneur when you're like a kid in school and you didn't buy this, then you're not really about it. If you didn't buy this book, you're not really about that life of like giving money to people that you shouldn't be giving. If you know, you know. If you didn't buy this Richard Branson autobiography, right? If you didn't buy this book, then you're not real. If you didn't buy the Richard Branson autobiography and read it and think you too can start your own version of fucking Virgin, right? <laughs> then you weren't that guy. You thought, yeah, I'm going to read this on the bus, on the train, and I'm going to become rich, man. Like, ah, oh. honestly, bro. Poverty and fucking whatever scarcity or opportunities can really make you believe in some nonsense, bro. Like, look at this guy. This is the white Jesus, isn't it? Businessman Jesus. Look at him. Like, he's going to save me. He's going to save me. I'm in the ends crying <laughs> over chicken and chips. Richard Brent is going to save me. <laughs> anyway, let's play this. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Um, There's been a lot going on, Charlemagne. Oh, like yeah? what? Don't say like what, man. There's been a, a million and one accusations. <gasps> oh my God, no! <laughs> I'm being serious. So, so let me explain some things. I'm, I'm not. My attorneys don't. Want also, by the way, more people. Again, people on the internet are so sensible and so wise. I wish I could see these type of things. One person said, "Never listen to somebody. You know, never get business advice from a DJ." <laughs> right? I saw in the comments. Another person said. Never invest in someone's business when their own friends haven't invested in that business. Never invest in someone's business when their own close friends haven't invested in said business. And I was like, oh, yeah. Why, why don't Angela Yee, before she was there, why didn't she invest in this flipping thing? And why didn't Charlemagne the God, who's also his co-host and his friend, invest in the same business? I was like, they must know something <laughs> that we didn't know. Oh, God almighty, man. You want me to speak, but I think there's things that I need to clear up a little bit. I think you should listen to your attorney. Why don't light people like to listen? Like, if your attorney told you don't say nothing, why are you talking? Listen, so Caesar and myself did seminars. Now, the reason I did these seminars is because I wanted to uplift my community. I wanted to teach my... <laughs> I'm sorry, hold on. Let me, let me lower this a little bit. Oh, I'm only down to 360 already. Okay, cool. Um, let me do 240. Fuck it. Um, imagine saying you're uplifting your community by scamming them out of their hard-earned money. You have to be a real piece of shit. I'm uplifting my community. Give me your money, as I confess all the rest of it. Give me your money. I'll buy. I'll spend your money on G-Wagons. And that's how I'm uplifting my community. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Uplifting my community. Like I love the optics as well. You sit on this gold throne, expensive jacket, expensive hat. Love it community about real estate things that i didn't know when i was first buying my first home i wanted to teach our community about investing in generational wealth so i did these seminars and brought industry professionals to be fair they both scammed anyway charlemagne did the whole like mental health scam thing when he was going through some because i think the charlemagne mental health thing happened at the same time he was getting accused of rape allegedly from this woman and other sexual stuff as well so he did a whole pivot into like mental health and did that whole scam even though he's incredibly mean right and bullies people online and shit with the words that he says and whatnot he's out here kind of pushing mental health great amazing and then mb did the thing of like flipping houses and another thing to be really curious about online some people i think someone mentioned before about his cars some people are saying DJ Envy's lifestyle might end up biting him in the ass because some people are wondering how much can a radio DJ, morning radio DJ, actually make to afford him the life that he has? Because if you go on his Instagram, if you watch his recent interview with Vlad, this guy is 
very wealthy. He does come from a rich family, obviously, because I think he grew up um, with a family, you know, two parents that worked decent jobs and he didn't really want for many things. But he lives a very lavish life. Crazy big mansions, um, crazy cars in his garage, a wife that's always dressed in the latest this and that. He has a special thing he does with his wife on social media where he's like, 12 days of Christmas where he buys her designer things every day to make her know that he loves her, whatever nonsense. So people are saying that his lifestyle choices may actually end up biting him in the ass. And they're also saying, how could a radio DJ make that kind of money to afford those type of things? See what happens when he puts everything on social media. And what people are saying to me in the chat here, AZ, this man has a convertible G-Wagon. He has a convertible G-Wagon. No, 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 no. I, I want to see this. I need to see this. Let's see. <laughs> DJ MV G Wagon. I need to see this. There's a convert he has a convertible G Wagon. What's that look like? With a retract like the it can it actually convert when you press a button? Oh ho, 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 ho. that's a nice <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'd want to K.I. double L this guy. If he took my money and I saw him on Vlad with this convertible G-Wagon <clears throat> that looks like it's custom, that looks like it's limited edition, I'm going to fight you. How much is this car, by the way? How much is this fucking car? How much? Uh, G-Wagon convertible... How much are they going for here? Um, what two hundred grand? I guess they the, the one he particularly has must be more. To be honest, they're saying a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, but I don't think that's the actual price. I think they're probably worth way more than that. To be fair, but fuck, bro, fuck, that looks good. I'm not gonna lie. And again, I'm not super big car guy when it comes to knowing what cars are, but I would assume this particular vehicle isn't cheap fucking hell bro that looks good objectively again i would like it i would drive it you know what it kind of reminds me of what's that two-seater subaru jeep thing you know it kind of reminds me of that sort of stuff but anyway regardless um <sighs> what a crazy guy let's go back to the video where, where is he there we go let's go back to the video what are you saying <clears throat> to all these seminars whether it was real estate agents from different markets, contractors, uh, conventional lenders, hard money lenders. I even brought auction.com to actually show people how to purchase houses More online. Scam partners. That's what I wanted to do for my people. Now, Caesar, if he took money, I wasn't privy to it, nor did I even know. But I do <laughs> understand how people feel if they did give him money because I gave him a lot of money. Jesus. That I didn't see a dollar of return. But for, for anybody to say I Yo, was involved, that's totally not true. We can't keep letting light skins get away with this. Looking like DJ Khaled's scamming cousin <laughs> DJ skimmed. <laughs> DJ scammed. Big up UJ. DJ scammed. <sighs> that whole Spider-Man with great um with great power comes great responsibility is very true. Because I would never like want to get to now what I, I don't know. Maybe because, yeah, maybe because I've been making content now myself for a while, right? I kind of can see now, because I always used to think that kind of thing people say about, oh, you have a platform, you have to be careful what you say. I always thought that was really G-A-Y, like, who gives a fuck, man? Like, if you're dumb enough to listen, like, it's your fault. But I understand now, there are people out there that are very susceptible to things that people say, especially if they like them, especially if they're famous and shit they can be easily led and it really is your responsibility to go out of your way to not do that sort of thing it really is and i feel like the ones that do succumb to that temptation knowing full well that people are only agreeing or doing business with you because of your fame and not because of your intellect or your experience or anything you are a really horrible person honestly you really are to deliberately take advantage of your fan base or people from your own community like that is so sick. And again, let it be known, this flipping housing thing, it didn't start as a good scheme. Then they got greedy. From the beginning, they're saying, from the beginning, 
there was no houses. All the properties they took their partners to go and see didn't exist. Big Evolutionary Commission. Water, water, water. Bet ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up Illusionary Commission watching my Class A intake. Appreciate you, brother. You know how it is. A gang. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's a really sad part about it. The properties never existed, you know? I don't know, man. That just bums me out, bro. Like, it really does. Like, nobody got their money back. Like, the people that got their money back, sorry, were the ones who started early. So if you invested in the scam early, they would have used other people's money, other victims' money to pay you back. But none of that money was made from the properties. Now, some people are suggesting, I forgot who said it, but again, what do you guys think about this theory? Some people are suggesting that this could have some ties to drug dealing. That's the theory. Because of the amount of money that's involved, it's over 80 million now, is the current pot of, the mem of people that have been scammed. They're now saying that some of it may have to do with drug dealing, like some sort of maybe money laundering, some sort of drug dealing on that sort of criminal side of things, which is crazy. If that's the truth, that is even crazier that it goes into the whole drug dealing side of things, because the way the way DJ Envy lives, let's actually see if he's got a picture of his cars, because the way he lives and he's a D radio DJ is a little bit too crazy. What are you saying? People saying, of course. OK. I didn't, I didn't think about the drug dealing thing until I watched it online. People are saying the drug dealing thing may be an option. Oh, my God. What's he doing? <laughs> Look at DJ Envy's cars. <laughs> no fucking way. Yo, big up. Uh, Bro, up the there are a lot of dummies out there. Seen Justin Awards videos? There are people out here that can't name three countries. Yeah, exactly. Low. Yeah, exactly. But again, I don't think that's a... Big up Austin Casey. Appreciate the donation, brother. I don't think because there's dummies, you should take advantage of them. I think that's even worse. Just because somebody is not as in smart or intellectual or wise or street smart as you, you shouldn't take advantage of it, especially not on the internet. That's not fair, unfortunately. I don't think so. At a certain level, if you're an influencer or whatever or content creator, you should be making enough to, you know, pay your bills and keep your lights on. You don't need to be scamming your fans. Make good products that people enjoy and shit. Have a good service, but don't go out of your way to scam fans because you can get away with it. I think that's deplorable. Fucking hell, bro. Again, I never knew this sort of stuff, but allegedly people are saying that his lifestyle is going to catch up to him. Like, a radio DJ really shouldn't be having these type of cars, really, should they, right? Let's see his house. <laughs> He's gonna be looking. Holy shit. <clears throat> Holy shit. That's a nice house. That's allegedly what in New Jersey. Realistic fabulous house in New Jersey. Didn't he buy didn't DJ Envy buy um what's that lady's name again? No more tears. What's her fucking name? Uh the singer. Uh the legendary. What's her fucking name? Fuck. Not Whitney Houston. Didn't DJ Envy buy like a singer's house on like foreclosure? She was got she gets she got into some financial issues and he bought it for really cheap. Am I am I mistaken? I swear he did. Mary J. Blige, didn't he buy Mary J. Blige's house? I swear he did, right? I remember this correctly. Mary J. Blige. Didn't he buy her house? Let's see if I'm correct here. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he bought this house for eight point eight million. Is that good is that a good price, you think? Eight point eight million? For this house, I don't know where it is, but fucking hell, bro. Let's actually go back to his car collection because I'm really interested to see DJ Envy cars. I know there's a there's a there's a Vlad interview about it, but Vlad always fucking copyright strikes video, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, let's just see his cars. <laughs> DJ Envy has a I don't know what car that is. Is that a Bugatti? And his wife is wearing a matching outfit. <laughs> Lime green Bugatti. <laughs> Whatever that car is, it doesn't look cheap. Holy shit, DJ Envy. What are you doing, brother, man? What are you doing? What are you doing, bro? Fucking hell. Oh, wow. He's got that... Um, He's got that Mercedes that fucking uh, Kanye had. The famous picture with Kanye and Virgil in a Mercedes. Is it? Is it? Is it a McLaren? Kanye West 
Virgil Abloh Mercedes. Do you guys remember this picture? <clears throat> Bear with me a second as I get it up on here. Yeah, this picture. Do you remember that one? I don't know. I don't think it's the same car. I don't know what car this is, but this car is so beautiful. I remember this one. They were, I don't know what where they, where were they? Were they in Cannes? Were they? I forgot what this one. McLaren SLR. Do you guys remember this picture? That was a legendary picture of of Ye and uh, Virgil back in the day. R.I.P. to the great. It's a Mercedes Benz SLR McLaren. Absolutely beautiful that car. And of course, this is fucking Kanye West, right? Good music, Kanye West, Yeezy's Kanye West driving this fucking absolutely spectacular car. But why does Envy, who's a radio DJ, have a car worth that amount, right? A red G-Wagon in the back with his kids on. This crazy, uh, what's that one? That's a, is that a, ben oh, that's a Kulaninga, Kulaninga, whatever. That oh no, that's Little Baby's car, sorry. That's not Envy's cars. The Illusionary Commission, appreciate you, brother. Three raw without hydration dot, I will no longer super druggies. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, you know the vibes. Three hours of fucking uh streaming, no addies, no druggies, you know the vibes. Um just straight uh whiskey or tea in the big mug. You feel me? Big up on illusionary commission, appreciate you, bro. But yeah. It's always a lifestyle, isn't it? It's always a what car is that anyway? Oh, it's a Porsche. He's got a lime green. That's what it was. It's a Porsche. Let's see what that is. A Porsche. What is it? 918 Spider. Wow. How much is this shit worth? How much is a Spider in the UK? <gasps> 781,000. So I'm assuming that's probably going to be a mil in that particular color with that particular finish. Wow. Wow. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> um, I'm curious. Do they have DJ? Because it, it, I know it's a public listed company, right? Um, what is it called? iHeartMedia. Will they have his salary online? DJ MV, uh, Breakfast Club salary. How much does he get paid in that place? Again, no pocket watching, but let's just see what one. How much is MV worth? Who owns Breakfast Club? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, they're saying here at Gem Gemtrex that allegedly his salary is three million, including taxes and shit. That's gonna be what? Probably half, one point five mil. 1.5 mil and you've got literally cars that are worth more than what you make. Dicey, dicey, dicey. This goes to show, in it, that posting something online can really be your downfall. Because if you live the modest life, maybe you might be able to get away with it. But the fact that he posts all these crazy mansion tours and he just did a recent feature with dj M with dj vlad sorry talking about how rich he is essentially which is such bad timing for him right you have to feel, you have to feel kind of sorry for him in that regard the timing of that drop of content and everything that he's been accused of is kind of wild but to earn three million dollars allegedly as a salary and then have cars that are worth more than that alone <sighs> anyway let's go back to the addressing no, I'll keep pausing. Sorry about this. True. I would never. I've been on this radio close to 30. I've been on radio close to 30 years and never in my 30 years time that I do nothing but try to uplift people and show people a different way through the business mind. And I would never take a dollar from somebody. I, I, I could be wrong, but I didn't see nobody accusing you of taking money. I just saw them say that they met Caesar because they heard you talking about Caesar. Now, nah, they, they basically said I was privy to it. And that wasn't true. I mean, I, at all. I, 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 the major issue here that Envy has is that he introduced everybody to Caesar Pena on his show on The Breakfast Club. That's the main issue that he's having now. No one is saying that he is involved in the scams, but they are saying they wouldn't have known who Caesar was if he never appeared on The Breakfast Club. That's the main problem. You know, that's the issue he has here. 
So how you disprove that, how you feel not personally responsible is crazy. You feel me? Okay, let's go. From what I read in actual court papers, I didn't see that. They said that the, all these people are saying that they met Caesar because of you. Right, and they're saying I don't that. I nobody it, accusing you of taking no money. To the point where if, exactly. if you read the court documents, Caesar wrote an affidavit that says DJ Envy, Rashawn Casey, had no knowledge of me investing people's money. <laughs> he wasn't there. Lowest. He wasn't part of those conversations. He wasn't even nowhere in those meetings. And those are, those are documents that's out there. So if we're going to talk about truth, let's talk about the truth. And those are the documents out there. And well, I know you can't talk about the truth yet because your lawyers don't want you talking at all. So the smart thing to do is I understand you want to say something to the listeners, and I and, and I'm sure the listeners appreciate it. But man, just wait until all the dust settles, and when all the dust settles, then we can get on this radio and have a real conversation. Until then, I just I don't you know I don't think you should be saying any of this. But, exactly, yeah. Charlemagne's actually being a good friend here. Shut the fuck up and let the courts deal with it. Shut the fuck up. But you can tell, again, I think people who scam or who are in, no, people who are in stressful positions usually give a lot away about how they're talking. So most likely, I would have the feeling, especially because he addressed it on The Breakfast Club, it's on their channel. Look, it's, this video is on The Breakfast Club channel. It's on the big Breakfast Club Power 105 channel. So I have a feeling that now that the allegations are ramping up, the cl uh, class action lawsuits are ramping up. The amount of money that's been scammed is ramping up. And there's actually a story that's heartbreaking. One of the people that I read recently, I le uh, learned from Tony the Closer, some guy who's a very popular business person, I think in New Jersey, I forgot his name. Please forgive me for the, the family out there that's connected with him. But some guy who's very popular in his community doing business, unfortunately passed away. He died in a car crash. And he allegedly invested up to a million dollars into this fucking scam. And um, big up Austin Casey, appreciate you, brother. If he didn't do anything, then why did he feel the need to give a guy his fake jewelry? Bingo! Another admission of guilt. I never even thought about that. That's a good example. Big up Austin Casey, I didn't even think about that. Appreciate you, brother. Um, but going back to this thing, one guy that invested a million dollars into the scam unfortunately passed away in a car crash recently. And when the family tried to collect the million dollars owed, Caesar told the family, oh, I paid him before he died. Me and him spoke. Do you know how sick that is? He tried to convince the family that he paid the guy off before he died in a car crash. Then the family found out he hadn't paid him and they're trying to sue and get the money back. So it's getting really dicey. So that's probably why Envy is now responding on radio because most likely... The iHeart Media people have told him, hey, your job's on the line. And if it's true what they're saying here on fucking social, what they're saying here on fucking Google, if that's his salary, that's probably his main income. And I'd assume this kind of job working on a breakfast club probably has a lot of perks to it because you get probably a lot of other deals because of your association and your celebrity of working on that station. So if he gets in the position where he gets fired from the breakfast club, that might stop a lot of other money coming in. And DJ Envy clearly lives a very lavish lifestyle. As we've seen with some of these pictures, right? We've been fucking seeing of his cars online, right? DJ Envy cars again, right? Let's just do it one more flipping time because why the hell not, right? He clearly lives a very, very lavish lifestyle. So if he was ever to get suspended without pay from the breakfast club because of his ongoing court case, with the amount of kids that he has, probably all in private school with a wife that probably has expensive taste and with his own outgoings monthly, he might be in financial ruin very, very quickly. So that's probably why he's panicking and trying to deny, 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 because he knows it could get very dicey for him very, very quickly. That's the current feeling I'm basically having here. You know, like, it, hey, again, I could be wrong. Who knows? But that's the feeling I'm getting here. Look at you. You can't even help yourself. What else do you want to say now? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Nothing. All right. Uh, but when the dust settles, okay. you, you can have a real conversation. Exactly. With, with the but audience. But it's difficult because the stuff that you're hearing is like, that's totally not true. Like, it's not true. Like, well, that should be, that's, that's fake news. Like, those are fake enough. stories. That should be enough. You know what the truth is. If you know what the truth is, don't worry about it. Because the truth don't need no defense. It just needs, the truth don't need no defense. Just witnesses. That's right. it. All right.
I, right, well, I, I, I love those defense. I love those fucking sayings from people that scam and lie a lot. The shoot. What does that even fucking mean? Like what? They say these fucking little sayings to make themselves feel good, warm and fuzzy on the inside. Just don't scam people. You don't need these fucking refrigerator, fucking suit, you know, um, suit, what are they called? Not pseudonyms, um, sayings, whatever. These fucking little, you know, um, family things that you probably say to make yourself feel warm and fuzzy. Just don't scam people. Simple as that. Hopefully. And by the way, you look very suspicious because you don't have your just for men in right now. So it's like the grades are coming in right here in the back. And, it, and you need a little haircut, so it just makes you look like, oh. I just want to say this on closing. Oh, I've never, lying. I've never stole anything from anybody, and I'll just leave it at that. What? You know what rhymes with what? What? But. And from what I was told, you used to steal a lot of butt back in the day. See, that's, <laughs> see, I can't. Anyway, um, Charmin's trying to make him feel good. It's not looking good. And again, like I said previously, as I've learned myself online, number one way to avoid scams. If it looks too good to be true, nine times out of ten, it probably is. Never receive financial advice from a fucking influencer, from a boxer, from a DJ. People who are not involved in finance should not be giving you financial advice. People who aren't involved in business should not be giving you business advice. It's just pretty kind of black and white. Another thing people said, if they're actually making the guaranteed returns that they're allegedly making, they will never share the details with the public. Rich people stay rich by keeping the money to themselves. They don't stay rich by going out there and being fucking altruistic entrepreneurs and telling everybody how else they can make money in the field that they're making money in. They keep that shit to themselves. So if somebody's out here telling you the steps of how to do this, how to do that, don't believe it. Don't believe it. Um, but yeah, crazy. I actually remember one time, right? I was actually really early in this. One time when I was really down bad and I was trying to make myself an entrepreneur and shit, right? You know what I did back in the day? And I think I was one of the first people to do it as well. I guarantee you I was. I went and ordered 500 um, of those curl sponges that black people use to make your hair look twisty. It's like a sponge. It's got loads of holes in it, right? And I think it's an American design or invention, but it basically became very popular maybe in like the early 2000s or something like that, right? So I remember I saw that very early. I jumped on Ali Ex no, AliExpress? No, Alibaba, actually, back in the day. No, AliExpress. Actually, AliExpress didn't exist at the time. I went on Alibaba, made an account, whatever, and got 500 of those sponges shipped to me when I was living at home with my mom. And I legitimately, I swear on my life, this is true, right? <laughs> I took those sponges... I put them in a, one of those Ikea bags and I went to the barber shops. Barber shop, and I, I was so broke back then. I had no money for a cab, no money for anything. So I went and was selling them door to door at barber shops with my little blue bag. And I made a decent amount of money. Like, I, I don't, maybe it was like 100 pounds, 150 pounds. But it felt really good to be like doing that kind of business. Like, you get stuff in, and, you know, you kind of import this shit. You bust it down, you put it in a bag and you kind of flipping them hand to hand. And I was selling them, I think, for like a tenner each because you couldn't buy them in person. You could only buy them online. It took ages to have them delivered. So I kind of jumped in front by having them available. And I went to barber shops and I was selling them to the barbers and selling them to the customers in there. And I made a decent amount of money. But then as soon as I did that, the, the following month, everybody sort of started importing them and it kind of died completely. So all those little businesses, all those little things online, FBAs and shit, Unless you're really early on it, people kind of latch on and figure out what's selling and then the market gets flooded and everyone kind of does it and then it kind of takes any type of return. But that was a kind of fun thing to kind of do for a little bit. But again, am I going to now stand up and start saying, buy my course because I made a little hundred pounds selling fucking hair sponges. Like that is scummy. That's what these guys are doing basically. They're taking that little experience of making a little 50 pounds, a little 100 pounds, a little 150 pounds, selling some sponges, and then trying to, you know, act as if they're fucking um, property tycoons. That's very, very deplorable, in my opinion. But again, I could be wrong. Because if I wanted to, I could. I could say like, hey, buy my course for $5. <laughs> I should show you how to scam too. Oh my God. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> 